What's good with the collective, man? Y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up, man. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you always notified, man. But I ain't gonna hold y'all. We're gonna get right into this video, man. Let's go. Footage of the explosion of the Georgia Guidestones. I was just sent this by someone who was able to access the security footage, and this is the only video out so far. This is probably the first place you're gonna be able to see it. And as you can see from the aftermath footage, this monument is pretty well destroyed. At least half of it seems pretty well blown apart. Man, come on. CIA documents on pain relief. If you're in pain, you might want to watch this. So I found some really interesting CIA documents. So what they're saying here is for you to focus on the part of your body that's in pain with your mind's eye being your third eye. Then they go on to say for you to repeat the numbers five, 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 one, five, until the pain is no longer in your awareness. And what's really crazy in these CIA documents, these daily tools, it says for use in your physical waking life. Waking life, like we are here to awaken. And here it is all along, CIA knows this. Of course, that's why these things have been kept secret, because they don't want us to know how to use this physical body properly. I mean, it's crazy how much stuff they know about the human body, but they are not willing to tell the public for very specific reasons. I mean, look, how to remember, how to reduce pain signals, how to reduce emotional charge, how to charge the body for great speed and strength. Here, pause and read. So if you're in pain, focus on the part of the body that's in pain with your mind's eye, your third eye. Repeat the numbers five, 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 one, five in your head until the pain is no longer in your awareness. Dentist pulled out more than. Wait a minute, bro. Like, to me, that sounds like, of course, the the body like a computer, kind of. Y'all get what I mean? Like, it's it's like a computer. You just add five, 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 one, five, and you use that with your third eye. Like that's crazy, bro. I'm today years old when I learned that, but. I naturally had this little, this natural reaction to where if I ever feel pain, I always try to like think about it to go make it go away. But I mean, I was on I was on the right path, but I just got steered completely onto the correct path by hearing that. That's crazy, but hey, that's what we're here to do is learn. So I was today years old when I learned that one. That's wild to me. That's wild to me. And and it's like yeah. How y'all feel about the Georgia Guidestones, though? How y'all feel about that? Because y'all had to enlighten me on that one. And to see it actually explode, like, you know, they, we know they set that up, bro. We know they set that up. Then 500 teeth from a seven-year-old boy's mouth. This is honestly the craziest story. It's, it really is. It's like, really it, crazy. It's, essentially, this boy, an Indian boy, um, was taken to the hospital because he had major swelling in his mm -hmm. lower right jaw. Like, it was swelled up bad. Mm -hmm. And when the, the doctors looked at it, they did an x-ray and CT scan, and they revealed that he had this, like, bag-like structure in his mouth, like tissue, mm -hmm. like a tissue sack mm -hmm. with literally 526 teeth in it. They've Dang. never seen anything like this before. Um, it was almost like a tumor, or it was really a tumor, that grew over time um, in this boy's mouth. It's so weird. Why would a body do that? Well, this is what's so interesting about this, is that they think there could be a connection to them being so close to cell towers. Damn, that's wild. All them teeth? Billionaire businessman Jeffrey Epstein was arrested in New York Saturday on federal charges related to sex trafficking. We saw Jeffrey Epstein, a source telling ABC News the multi-millionaire and convicted sex offender is now on suicide watch after he was found injured and unresponsive in his jail cell. When news, Jeffrey Epstein found dead in jail this morning. A New York Fire Department source telling Fox News that he was transported out of the Manhattan Correction Center just hours ago. There are reports his death was an apparent suicide. This comes just two weeks after Epstein was placed on suicide watch. FBI agents arrested Ghislaine Maxwell yesterday, nearly one year to the day after Epstein was arrested. Her attorney wants to postpone Tuesday's hearing because Maxwell was suddenly moved to solitary confinement. Her counsel says Maxwell took a test, which proves she is not suicidal. But now that she's in solitary, she can't properly prepare for sentencing. Maxwell is facing up to 55 years in prison for sex trafficking for helping her then-boyfriend, financier Jeffrey Epstein, abuse girls. And you'll never see me coming back. It was reported that you continue.
continue to meet with him over several years. Um, and that, in other words, a number of meetings. Um, is there a lesson for you, for anyone else looking looking at this? Well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, right? Hello, man. I ain't even gonna say his name. Y'all know everything his fault. <laughs> hey, normally they block videos or something like that when he get up in the video. So we gonna see if this make it. We gonna see if this be able to make it without getting blocked or anything. Let's pray on that. But they really think we that not, we not that intelligent to pick up on Epstein. Like, come on, bro. He on his own island or he on the Rothschilds island? He, he's somewhere. He on the island, though. He on the island, though. Living his life as if he's never did what he did. Like, that's what I feel. He ain't dead. He ain't unalived. When dude talking about... Y'all know who dude is. When dude over here talking about, man... He's not here no more. Yeah, right, bro. Stop playing with us. Stop playing with us, man. They be playing with our top, bro. They be thinking we ain't that intelligent when we ain't, we can't see. There is some people out here who can't see, who believe y'all, but we not one of them. We not one so of them. When Michael started to break down, his body was breaking down. His nose was artificial. I don't know if y'all noticed. Go back and Google Michael Jackson nose. It looks like a robot because it wasn't him. All right? His whole head was a wig it was a cap because when they first cloned michael he didn't have any hair it all burnt off in the pepsi commercial they put michael in a capsule and cloned it brought him back two years as the clone and michael jackson was watching all of this like i can't believe they're doing this so what happened to michael he just lived his life michael jackson is still alive He's already appeared on TV, but y'all didn't even know who he was. Go back and watch the CNN of Larry King, the guy with the glasses with the, the, the real bad burnt victim that played like Michael Jackson Satan when he was a kid. That's Michael Jackson. It burned him so bad it disfigured him. It, it, it tore up his skin. It did everything to him. You understand what I'm telling you? And also, after Michael was cloned, the real Michael Jackson, they bleached his skin. So he would look nothing like Michael. If you look at the dude who was on Larry King telling you about his childhood, how Michael Jackson helped him, he looks just like Michael. Just look at his eyes. And that's Michael Jackson. He's disfigured. That's how he looked when he got done with the Pepsi commercial. And they knew the world wasn't ready to see that Michael Jackson, so they had to keep him alive. Remember what I said prior. They've been cloning since 1945. So Michael comes back two years later. He looks nothing like the real Michael Jackson, but people buy into it. They still, he can still dance. Cause the clones is, is good mimicry. They're good. They're good at mimicking, man. That's what they do. So he got all his moves, but he was a little bit stiffer. I don't know if y'all look at the old Michael and then look at the new Michael. He's a little bit stiffer. With all of that drag queen story hour and all of that stuff. They try to target the children with that stuff. And family, these stories keep coming out. This story came out the other day with all of that drag queen story out. This guy right here, this is a, an LGBT activist. He runs a, a, he's the head of a, he's a community organizer out there in Pennsylvania at the center for LGBT youth. He helps, he runs a center for a lot of LGBT youths, white and black, a lot of white kids. And right here, Central PA drag queen activist charged with 25 counts of child pornography. For 15 years, for former Netflix cheer star Jerry Harris in child pornography case. They kept showing little subtle images of that pedophile sign. This is from the Eureka thing. Y'all see that symbol in the back? I catch all that stuff. I, my, you see that symbol in the back? Now look at that symbol in the back now. I keep warning you guys about cartoons with that symbol. I keep warning you guys about cartoons with that symbol in the back. I keep warning people in every cartoon you see, especially by Disney, they have that symbol 
in the back. Or they have that symbol in there. That's a pedophile symbol, guys. I mean, we... What y'all think about Michael, though? What? I ain't never heard that idea as far as Mike Jackson, man. I ain't never heard that idea. But I had seen a video like 26, 2017, how he still was alive and how he was actually attended his his own funeral. I did see that. But I never heard he got his face burnt. I mean, I knew he got burnt from the, the Pepsi commercial, but I ain't know it did his face like that. I'm not saying I believe it. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Spam it in the comments. Is he is he here with us? Is he gone? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Drop that in the comments. I'm curious about what we what we gonna talk about with Michael Jackson, man. Rest in peace if he is gone. Karen Crow, Louisiana. Damn. If you live there, man, tell me if that was true or not. Watch this, please. Whatsoever. Until Michael Jackson was found dead in a pool of blood. crazy thing is it followed you back to the dock that's wild that's wild I don't know if I want to go back to the sea at that point because if you ran into this thing that many times and then you come to the dock and it follow you to the dock you catch it in the water you on live you got the government pulling up then you getting a sketchy car accident and shout out somebody said that in the comments Y'all, y'all said that. Y'all broke this down in the comments. So now I'm able. I'm, I hear what y'all said, and then I'm able to see this. It's like, okay. Shout out to y'all, man. I know what y'all talking about. 
That's crazy. But the government put up to his job, though. That's wild. Of course we knew he, they was going to pull his TikToks down. Bro, they watching everything. They watching every move we make, every turn we go. They watching, bro. They know. They know. They probably watching this right now. Damn. Sho Chu, which is the CEO of TikTok. You guys keep saying I'm going against community guidelines and taking my content down. Quit doing that before I have to come over to China and straighten shit out. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the content. Interesting enough, China is back on strict lockdown due to C-19 breakout. Some of the Chinese people are literally killing themselves, committing suicide because they don't have access to any food or water. Literally screaming from their houses saying they need help. And what is more alarming is that they have walking drone dogs on the streets telling people to get back in their houses. And you don't think this shit is coming right here in America. You got to be tripping, right? They have flying drones as well. Get back in the house. You're on lockdown. <laughs> I know seeing is believing to a lot of you folks out there. So let me show you a quick video of what I'm talking about. Shanghai remains eerily empty. 26 million people under a massive COVID lockdown, relying on government deliveries, and anger is soaring. Social media showing videos of protests over food and medicine, a supermarket ransack. At a building where residents have been locked down for two weeks, they shout, we only want supplies. Why are you beating people? At night, the echoes of people crying out from their windows for help. With the Omicron variant surging here, China is tightening its strict zero COVID rules to contain what is now the country's worst outbreak ever. Tens of thousands of asymptomatic people being corralled into mass quarantine centers. In some cases, children have been separated from their parents, triggering public outcry. American Josh Vaughn got swept up in the dragnet. He's trying to keep his business going from a hospital. This, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Two years into the pandemic, there is no easing up on zero COVID here. Robots patrol some streets, <laughs> reminding people to wear masks. Here in Beijing, even when there's one case, an entire neighborhood is blocked off. You can see deliveries are passed through a window. In Shanghai, drones tell people to stay home. Control your soul's desire for freedom, it says as more cities double down with restrictions. Damn. I wonder if them robot dogs shoot. So as I was on my way home, I stopped to grab a couple things at the store and there were some National Guards guys in there. They're here in town training for a few weeks and they were grabbing some Gatorades and stuff like that. And I just kind of joked with them as a vet to a, a guy in uniform, and I said, hey, you guys uh, training for Russians? <laughs> and the man looks me dead in the eye, and he goes, no, sir. Civil unrest. What? So they're training the National Guard for civil unrest. What are they going to do? Why are they going to need you guys, I asked. And he goes, I don't know. But we're told it probably isn't even going to be here in South Dakota. Woo! Damn. What y'all feel? Y'all remember the movie The Terminator? It starred Arnold Schwarzenegger as The Terminator. He was a cyborg assassin sent back in time from 2029 to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor, whose unborn son will be one day save mankind from extinction by Skynet. Remember Skynet? It was a hostile artificial intelligence in a post-apocalyptic future, right? What if I told you there's an actual surveillance program called Skynet, and this is a real thing? Skynet is a program by the U.S. National Security Agency that performs machine learning analysis on communications data to extract information about possible terror suspects. What if I told you that Google plays a big part in this? This was in 2014. Google acquires human-like AI company for $500 million. Skynet is now a real possibility. Continuing its rather intimidating streak, 
of acquisitions, Google has acquired the British artificial intelligence company DeepMind for about $500 million. In 2016, the NSA's Skynet program may be killing thousands of innocent people. Bet y'all didn't hear about this. In 2014, the former director of both the CIA and NSA proclaimed that we kill people based on metadata. Now, a new examination of previously published Snowden documents suggests that many of these people may have been innocent. Last year, The Intercept published documents detailing the NSA Skynet program. According to the document, Skynet engages in mass surveillance of Pakistan's mobile phone network and then uses a machine learning algorithm on the cellular network metadata of 55 million people to try and rate each person's likelihood of being a terrorist. These people were mostly killed by drone attack, but they're not even sure if they were guilty or not. In 2019, the U.S. and its allies are getting serious about armed ground robots. They're ran by artificial intelligence. You can read about them right here. Pause and read. Now, all of a sudden, a Google engineer was put on leave after claiming sentient AI bot is scared. He published transcripts of remarkable conversations between himself and the bot, which included a claim from the robot that being turned off would be like death. Google's former executive sends doomsday warning as researchers are creating God. This was in 2021. A former Google executive has warned about the dangers of AI when he astonishingly claimed researchers are creating God. The Egyptian-born entrepreneur was struck by a terrifying revelation about the future of AI after witnessing an eerie moment in the firm's R&D labs. The epiphany came after he saw AI developers collaborating with Google X on the dexterous robotic arm. And remember, scientists craft living skin for robots made of human cells. Movies coming to life. Man, I never heard of Skynet. I never heard of Skynet, but I do remember if y'all have been rocking for a minute. And one of our very first couple videos, we went over to Human Cells. Man, I just said in like a couple videos ago, scientists, bro, they be trying to play God, bro. They be trying to play God. And then like, it's like they need to stop. They need to stop. And real fast. I don't know if y'all can hear that helicopter going on outside. But if y'all hear him talking, they've been all day, bro. It's been going down over here. And yeah, the helicopter been going and they've been talking. Giving descriptions of people or the person they look for. Just give y'all heads up. Y'all hear that helicopter going over. Y'all probably just heard it. But yeah, back to these clips, man. The Skynet, I never heard of that before. I'm just getting tired of hearing all these robots. And like I said, we're going to go to war with robots in a minute. And aliens and robots is probably about to get into it. And y'all keep saying that aliens is robots and robots is aliens like Transformers. I'm not going to shoot that idea down either. But how I see it right now is, them is two separate things. In my opinion, your opinion I respect. I also am open to it. But I think, yeah, put down in the comments if y'all think. Put in the comments what y'all think. Is this like some Transformer stuff? Aliens is robots and robots is aliens? Or are they two separate things? And are they going to end up feuding if they are two separate things? I'll drop it in the comments. Let me know. What are your thoughts? Watch till the end. I was given a classified tape showing part of the Apollo mission being falsified, of lunar orbit being falsified. Being falsified? Correct. We've got an unedited tape from a source at the Johnson Space Center. Yeah, totally nonsense. We want to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you orbited the moon during oh, Apollo 15. Thank you. thank you very much. Yeah. All right, come on. Swear to God that you did so. Would you please just stay back? 
Lion ass. So you just gotta eat that, man. You can't even throw it back. I told y'all it's going down. He ate that though. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? Gentlemen. Mr. Sarkel. Yes? If you really walked <laughs> on the moon, why would you not do that? So why don't you just put the into the record in the argument that put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Sargo, knowing you, that's probably a fifth Bible. Really? Well, no, it's a real Bible. You'd have the opportunity to have $5,000. The meeting, it's not open. Well, you have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have a tape. It'd be fine. Why don't you swear to... Why not? Why won't you do it? So why don't you put your hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked yeah, on the moon? Mr. Sarpo is being a fool of himself in front of the world, yeah. Mr. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> hey, what's crazy is I just saw Truman Show. Over the week, over, I ain't gonna say those words on Saturday. I just watched it, bro. That movie is dope. I never watched that movie before. I'm I'm late. I'm I apologize. I'm sorry. But yeah, I just saw that movie and I like that movie. That movie was hard. I'd be mad though if my life is a Truman show, literally, and the whole world watching me. The stuff I done been through and they laughing at, bro. Oh bro. As soon as I get off set, I'm whooping somebody. But I'm just saying on on, on a on a on a serious note. Man. He didn't want to touch the Bible. Why he don't want to touch the Bible? Do he know the earth? Do he know the earth flat? Do he know he never he never orbit orbited around the moon? Y'all let me know. Responsible leader. He wanted to get back home after the war, so he really watched his P's and Q's. He and his unit had taken off in about five or six choppers and were headed to the next rendezvous point. The land they were flying over was generally peaceful. He was the lead of the cluster of choppers, and everything was going smoothly for the first 10 or 15 minutes of the flight. Then, darkness fell. All right, fellas, throw your goggles on. It's time to go dark. He no sooner gave the order, when suddenly, his gunner started ringing out shots. The captain thought, what the hell? He didn't understand what he was shooting at, as they were flying over a peaceful area. He gets up from the passenger seat at the front of the chopper and starts heading back towards the gunner and sees that he's shooting not at the ground at the enemy, but in mid-air, parallel to the chopper. The other choppers notice this and suddenly make evasive moves because he was literally shooting in their direction. Cease fire, soldier! What the hell are you shooting at? said the officer. The soldier stops suddenly. He can see that he is sweating bullets and his eyes are dilated as if he's on pure adrenaline. Knowing that drugs were a problem in Vietnam at this time, he quickly glanced him over and realized he didn't exhibit any behavior of being intoxicated. Right there, sir! Right there! They're flying right next to us! Don't you see him? The officer glances over. There's nothing there. Calm down, soldier! I'm not seeing what you're looking at! Right there! There's some on the treetops! Two of them! They're looking at me! A couple more shots ring out. Seize fire! Confused, the officer doesn't understand what's going on. Then he looks at the guy. The group's the thing. The officer is dumbfounded. He can tell by the look in the soldier's eyes. He believes what he's saying. Describe them, soldier. Sir, they have wings. They're about seven to eight feet tall. Their faces look almost like gargoyles. 
and they have horns. They almost remind me of demons. Aw, yeah. oh, come on, soldier, get a grip, get your act together. Then he takes a step back and looks directly at the soldier's goggles. He then hears the voice of his superior. The officers and the pilots are not to wear the goggles. That's when a light bulb goes off. Give me your night vision goggles, soldier. He hands them over to the officer. He puts them on, and he cannot believe what he sees. Off in the distance, looking at him, are two winged creatures that look like demons straight from hell. They look at him and then back at each other, and it seems as if they are saying something. And then suddenly, they look at him and begin flying straight at him. He rips the goggles off. What the hell was that? He cannot believe what he just witnessed. After tearing the goggles off as fast as he could, he looks back up, and they're gone. What in the world did I just see? After having this experience, he ran straight to the front of the chopper, got on the mic, and commanded the entire crew to take off the goggles. The rest of the team took them off, and everything was back to normal. They didn't wear them until the green night vision goggles came out. After the incident, the officer described to his superiors that for the next few months, he had night terrors and continued seeing these entities. And he wasn't the only one. His crew was having the same issue. It took them months to get over just that initial short wearing of the red night vision goggles. He'd notify his superiors and later receive praise for the quick action he took when running into the problem. They'd soon find out that the night vision being in red was what allowed them to see these evil entities. For some reason, the combo of red and the night vision combined allowed them to see almost in another dimension, much like the Visianin. And the majority of the soldiers that experienced these night vision goggles all say the same thing. They were all around them, and it seemed as though they were around us at all times. We just don't see them because they're at a different frequency. They'd eventually switch to the green night vision goggles and have no more issues for the rest of the war. But even today, soldiers claim that when using the green night vision goggles, that they often see UFOs that they would have never seen with the naked eye. So what do you think? Do you think these different colors allowed them to see into another realm? Could we be surrounded by angelic beings? Let me know in the comments. Y'all heard that story before? I mean, I believe. I believe that. I like this what large yet little known granite box, which is now on display at the Cairo Museum in Egypt, is said to have been abandoned by the Egyptians due to a mistake in the cuts as you see here, thus forcing them to discard and move on to another block of stone. But as the saying goes, the devil is in the details, and this off-centered slanted cut, which is the reason why it is said to have been discarded, is actually strong supportive evidence that they were using a method of tooling that far exceeds anything known or believed to have been possible to have been possessed by the ancient Egyptians, because Make no mistake, if this error has been done with a slow, primitive, copper-based saw as has been widely theorized and, in fact, intensely claimed by modern researchers, then surely the ancients cutting this stone would have noticed the error and corrected it far sooner. I mean, let's not forget that when the alleged copper-based saws were tested on granite by leading Egyptologists, the results proved to be so unbelievably slow that it's remarkable that some still choose to even suggest it. In fact, during this demonstration, they were only able to cut at a rate of four millimeters an hour, which is so uh, astonishingly slow that it's not even remotely feasible. I mean, do the math, and four millimeters an hour equates to less than one inch every six hours of nonstop labor-filled handwork. So if that were actually the case, then clearly the people cutting this stone would have noticed the error immediately. In fact, at this slow rate, they would have noticed the mistake literally days ahead of time and would have not continued to cut this stone block without surely noticing the inaccuracy. That is unless they were using a method of tooling that cuts at a rate that is far, far quicker than what we're aware of or even thought was possible. Why well, we just can't say? We got more intelligent as far as electronics. I wouldn't even say that. Maybe as far as like cloning, robots, stuff like that. But as far as, I mean, just think. Why, 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 because it's back in those days, they can't be more intelligent than we are now. 
that sound really arrogant to me. Like, come on, the pyramids was built back in them days. Like, what? And we still can't make that. Let's not even get on the Tartarian Empire, the, the structures they was making. Like, maybe we got, maybe we haven't got as, maybe we were not more intelligent now than we were then. Maybe we were more intelligent then, maybe now we just learned how to make it work for us. Google, um, yeah, you, you, you got to find an answer, you go to Google, you go to YouTube to figure out how to do something, like maybe, maybe we just got, we, we just learned how to make things more convenient, and back then, things maybe weren't so convenient, you had to put in more hard work, but they were more intelligent, that's what I feel, I could be wrong. Eminem clone malfunction. Your head. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. You should address the camera because right now there's a lot of people probably stay out. <laughs> I've seen that clip before. You want some figures? Okay, latest water test. Tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero. Then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 feet, no, excuse me, 8,000 foot level, 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? You know, these tests are international in scope. We're seeing this all over the world, guys. Okay, pH of acid soils is 20 times more alkaline. The aluminum in the soil has doubled in the last 10 years. Aluminum blocks essential nutrients. I am unable in my garden to restore normal pH, and that's because nanoparticles are now in the circulatory systems of both plants and humans. So welcome, fellow guinea pigs. Uh, the collapse and decrease of agriculture is something I worry about even more than the previous info about autism and Alzheimer's. I mean, why wouldn't we think that aluminum would be not be in, in rainwater? If they controlling the weather, if they can't trailing, like, come on, not, not to say the other stuff they might be doing that we might not even just be talking about or not even be aware of yet. As I'm sure, Remember, I'm sure when they first started chemtrailing, people probably didn't question that. We probably didn't even realize they was doing it until they started becoming more current. What if they doing something right now that none of us know about, but they doing it? And then in 10 years from now, we be like, somebody, our younger generation come along and they start pinpointing stuff. And then we be like, bro, I didn't realize they was doing that thing. We had so much other stuff we was focused on that they was doing. I'm just saying it's an idea. But... We made it to the end of this one. I appreciate y'all, man. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified, man. Join the community. You got, I got to join the collective, man. If you haven't you just watch, man, join the community. If not, bro, go find somebody else. We need people who's going to join this community and this collective, man. And we're going to go ahead and keep pushing this, keep learning. And who knows how far we can take it. Who knows what else, what else is in store. But, yeah, I'm going to let y'all go on this one, man. Until I see y'all in the next one. We gone.